Contessa, a legendary name synonymous with sailboat yachting. Jeremy Rogers, the man behind Contessa Yachts, was a pioneer in glass fibre and injection moulding and also a phenomenally successful racing sailor. When his boats proved successful on the racing circuit, they were adapted and sold as production yachts. Since the birth of the first Contessa 26 in 1966, the Contessa fleet has grown to include over a thousand yachts, ranging from 25 to 43 feet. Contessas of all sizes can be found in ports around the world, and the Contessa name has come to represent some of the best-known, trusted and well-loved boats in the industry. Today, the business is still run by Jeremy's son, Kit, and the yard continues to build and restore perhaps the most famous of the Contessa range, the Contessa 32. Born in 1937, Jeremy Rogers was evacuated to Canada during the war, spending summers by the Ottawa River and long snowed-in winters building model boats with his brothers. These early experiences fostered in him an enduring love of boats and the water, and when he returned to England, model boats turned to real boats, which Jeremy never stopped building. Jeremy did a five-year apprenticeship with uh, Jack Chippendale and Ferrum and with the Burton Boat Company. Jack Chippendale was a master craftsman. All his boats had inlaid white wood against the contrasting mahogany and, and uh, they were just wonders to look at. But they were also extremely light uh, and, and built to win. And Jeremy Rogers was an apprentice there for five years. So he, he had the most perfect grounding for a career in boat building. At the end of his apprenticeship, good family friend offered to pay up front for a folk boat, a traditional wooden folk boat. And we built that in our back garage, really, in the middle of the high street. Well, it was quite difficult getting it out of the house, actually. <laughs> we had to roll it out through, it was like an arch. We had about half an inch of clearance on the top. I could not one person either side of the boat holding it up, no cradles or anything like that. And I ended up by building, I think it was 17 over the years. He learned his skills, he learned his trade uh, using uh, wooden construction techniques. But I think he figured out pretty quickly that that wasn't going to be the future. It was just too labour intensive. Everybody wanted these boats and demand very quickly outstrips the ability to build them in wood. So uh, it came to the question of can we make them in glass fibre, make, make a production run of them. We were quite hard up in those early days and building a new glass fibre boat involved building moulds and those were expensive. He found a, a backer, a chap called Vernon Sainsbury of the, of the grocer's fame who funded the whole development of the Contessa 26 and without Vernon Sainsbury I suspect it would never have happened. So that's what rolled it and then that boat as a model it set the world on fire. It, when it first appeared at a boat show it was a huge success. I'm Tanya Abbey and I sailed around the world on a Contessa 26 when I was 18. My favorite thing about her was how pretty she was. I used to love coming back to her in an anchorage and being like, there's my pretty boat. I wanted a pretty one. And she sailed really well. It was nice to be able to head really close to the wind and make headway and <laughs> go fast. For such a small boat, she was really fast too. I knew it right from the get-go. You look at the boat, the full keel, the just the design of that boat. I knew it was gonna be a good boat. And she was super forgiving too, since she was so small, I was able to make all the mistakes I made and learn from them. It was the dream boat for that sort of trip. It did single-handed transatlantic races. It was called the O-Star in those days, and it won the Round Britain race. It went everywhere, and it's not the driest boat, but it was as tough and as seaworthy as you would find in a 26-foot boat. By about 1969-70, we'd got a very large customer base, and people were saying, mm, I just need something a bit bigger. Jeremy, can't you build us something a bit bigger? And Jeremy's brother was very much involved, Jonathan and David Sadler. And between the three of them, uh, they came up with the Contessa 32. Jeremy and I were scheming 
to, to build the new racing boat. It was the racing scene that drove the boats we wanted. And we often had to modify them slightly from what we had used in the prototype to being able to sell it. Uh, we built Red Herring, the first Contessa 32, and we took on Bruce Banks in Cowes, but that winter, Bruce Banks got a new boat, and we knew we were in trouble. So we took Red Herring, and we put the engine in the forepeak to get our rating down, and we fitted a trim tab on the back of the keel, and this came up to a lever in the front of the cockpit. And Jeremy always steered, but it gave me something to fiddle with. So every now and again, I would say, Jeremy, two degrees, and absolutely nothing happened. <laughs> But it gave me something to do, and, and Jeremy would just raise an eyebrow and say nothing. We took her to the boat show in 1971. Um, history repeating itself. People just came along with their checkbooks. They knew that Jeremy built good boats. They wanted something round about 32 foot, which was in those days a very, very large yacht. She was just the right boat at the right time, and she was pretty. It was a great time, very exciting time, because things were developing so fast, not just in terms of construction, but actually in terms of uh, the, the, the designs and, and, and how the market was moving, and the volume was massive. They're extremely strong. They're uh, very, very well built, and they've been sailed right down to Antarctica several times, in fact. So they're real go-anywhere boats, despite their low freeboard. They are, are brilliant uh, boats at sea. There was just some magic about that boat. It was so cosy and homely and manageable, and there wasn't anything you couldn't do yourself. So it made you feel very sailorish. I can't, I can't explain it any better than that. There wasn't anything you couldn't accomplish, or maybe even fix yourself. And there's something really, really nice about that. I think the Fastnet race in 79 was a key moment where the reputation, more than that, the legend of the Contessa 32 was, was made. No other boat seems to be able to emulate that sort of that fame, that aura. During the early 70s, Jeremy was extremely active and successful on the international racing scene, always looking to push the boundaries of design and build on his success. So choosing the right design and careful construction of the boat, choosing the right materials. It's just the fascination of uh, varying conditions. One can never anticipate what is going to happen. The gun goes and we start racing. The weather condition changes, the tactics change. We can be in a gale or light winds sunning ourselves. We never know what's going to happen. And no race is the same. And apart from that, one is working as a team with the rest of the crew, have people that you can uh, rely on in bad conditions. You know, one gets to know them very well. Again, demand came for bigger and bigger boats. The first of those was Contessa 35, a boat called Gumboots, which Jeremy Rogers steered to victory in the One Ton Cup, which was the premier trophy, uh, international trophy at the time. It was a hugely exciting venture, and whatever he evolved, people wanted. I don't think you'll find Jeremy making an ugly boat, ever. And if you like, um, that and speed were the two things that uh, uh, characterised Contessa yachts, really. So as well as the Contessa, my father also built some one-off racing boats, 45-foot uh, racing boats which were built for the likes of Alan Bond and the Aga Khan in the 80s. Uh, since then we've been building boats ranging from Optimists, J24s, Etchels uh, and continuously building the Contessa 32. The heritage and the look and the aesthetic of the Contessa is just something that nothing else can replicate. That love that my father has always had of making things beautifully, making them well, making them to the highest quality has endured 